Hello everyone and welcome back to TSI. Today we are doing a Pixar tier list. All the movies, the tiers are best of the best at the very top. Very good. It's enjoyable. Small yikes, big yikes, and haven't watched because I think there's a couple or maybe just one that I haven't watched on here. But yeah, if you guys didn't know, today is the five year anniversary of The Incredibles 2, which is insane. And also Elemental comes out this weekend. And I got the chance to watch it a little bit early, which was really awesome. So I can do this tier list a little bit early too. So let's get right into it. All right, so we're starting off with the original Toy Story, which came out in 1995, by the way, before I was even born, so that's crazy. And I'm gonna put it in, I think, very good. I'm between best of the best and very good, but uh, I'm gonna put it in very good because there's just better movies afterwards, but because it is the first movie, but it's iconic. It started a franchise that I absolutely adore and a lot of people around the world love. It's a really simple story, but it's still a really fun and great story. I like the whole idea of it, of having toys come to life when their owners are gone and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just a really nice story. I love the connection between Woody and Buzz and how it grows throughout not just this movie, but throughout the entire franchise movies. And it's just a really fun watch and I love rewatching it every so often. All right, A Bug's Life. This is one I have not watched in a while and from what i remember i think it's a small yikes i don't think the animation was as good as the original toy story in this one i think the whole idea of bug's life i mean it was fine i guess but it just didn't really work out too well for me in my opinion it was kind of boring um especially for little kids it's just kind of hard a hard watch i guess you could say um that's kind of mostly what i remember from it if i'm gonna be honest um yeah just not a great movie in my opinion that's why it's going in small yikes Toy Story 2, now this is one of my favorite Pixar films, one of my favorite animated films. This is going in best of the best, this topped the first one a lot. I think the story was just much better and now that we knew the characters, we were able to introduce some new ones like Jesse, Bullseye, uh, uh, Stinky Pete, which was really awesome because then we got to see some new characters but then we also knew there are old characters. Oh, we also had Wheezy who I forgot about, yeah, so there was a lot of awesome characters in this one. I think it was just really awesome to have these two teams kind of have Buzz Lightyear with his own team, Woody with his own little team, um, and Al's little um, hotel room or whatever. And the whole journey and how much Buzz really cares for Woody and why he's going on this super long journey to find Woody is really awesome. It's really nice to see. And we, I like that ending where like Woody's like, oh, I want to stay, and Buzz kind of gets mad, and then everything works out in the end. It's just really fun, and it's one of my favorites for sure. Monsters, Inc. Now, this one I also really like. This is a childhood favorite. Uh, one that I watched a lot, and I'm gonna put it in very good, and I'll put it above Toy Story. I really like Sully and Mike. Again, their relationship, just like Woody and Buzz, is amazing, but I think their relationship is honestly one of the best ones in the entirety of Pixar for, like, uh, buddy-type, um, buddy-type relationships, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, it was, again, really great. I also love the relationship between Boo and Sully, and the twist with, like, the, I don't even know what his name was, um, well, he, he had like the legs or whatever, but he would like crawl around. The twist with him as a villain was really awesome. Randall is a classic villain. We love him. And yeah, it's just a really fun movie. Another great rewatchable movie. It's definitely uh, super nostalgic, just like all these other movies. All these older Pixar movies are just super great. Finding Nemo, this is a lot of people's favorite Pixar films. I'll also put it in very good. I'm gonna put it below Toy Story and Monsters Inc. I think this one, while it's still good, it, it was never one of my favorites. I don't think I connected with the characters as much, if that makes sense. But then again, I, they're all really great characters. I especially love the turtle. On, I, oh, Crush, that's his name, okay. I remember it from a video I was watching of the ride at Disneyland, but yeah. Yeah, he's a great character. All the other characters are great. Really see how much Marlon cares for Nemo. And that that beginning was that that was so sad when Marlon pretty much all of Marlon and his wife's kids died except for Nemo and then Marlon's wife died. It was just it was sad, but it was it was definitely a really great beginning. Um a, one of the best beginnings to a Pixar film out of all of these. So yeah. The Incredibles, one of my favorites too. I'm gonna put this in best of the best. I'm gonna put it, I'll, I'll put it above Toy Story 2, but it's 
barely above there. I really enjoy The Incredibles. Um, the first one is just a great film. And I really like how we went into the whole aspect of superheroes being illegal because that's not something that you see in like Marvel or DC, I would say. This is, it was just a really awesome idea. Syndrome's one of the greatest villains, you know, how he goes from that little boy who admired Mr. Incredible and now he's wanting revenge because of how Mr. Incredible treated him. It really shows that your actions have a way of coming back to you, which I think is really a great message. So it's just a fun movie. I really enjoy it. And the family comes together in the end as a family of supers. And the second one does kind of uh, change the resolution of this one a bit, um, which is kind of why the second one is not my favorite, but we'll, we'll get into that later. I still like it, but yeah, The Incredibles, the first one is really great. I really enjoy it. All right, Cars. This one, I remember as a kid, my parents told me this. I would watch this like twice every single day. This is a great movie. I'm putting this in best of the best, and surprising a bit, but I'm, I'm putting it at the very top. I know that's a that's a bit crazy, but I truly love this movie so much. I really enjoy the characters, especially Lightning, Lightning McQueen, sorry, and Mater. Their relationship is great. I mean, there's so many great relationships in uh, the Pixar universe, you know? It's it's really awesome to see, but I just love Cars so much, and it's a, an, an amazing message, kind of like how Lightning McQueen goes from this selfish guy who really just cares about winning the Piston Cup and being famous and, and how he goes from that guy to like this really nice and caring guy who actually appreciates the little things in life and it's just a really nice arc for him but uh Cars 2 is kind of kind of, kind of ruins this again which we'll get into later of course I don't want to get into now but Cars is a great movie I always love watching that end uh, race where Lightning McQueen pushes the king to the finish line. It's really awesome. It really just shows how much his character grows throughout this movie. So I love that. Ratatouille, this is, uh, I think, an underrated Pixar film in my opinion. I'm, I'm putting this in best of the best. I'll put it above, um, yeah, I'll put it above Toy Story 2, below Incredibles and Cars. I love Ratatouille. It's a great movie. It's just, it's so random. Like, you would never think about a rat being a chef and controlling this human. It's just, it's out of this world, but that's what Pixar is. They have really crazy and awesome ideas, which is what I love about it. But I think this is a really nice movie. I love cooking in general and uh, being in the kitchen. It's just like super uh, fun to cook in my opinion or bake or whatever. So I guess this movie is a bit, uh, that's a big reason why I love this movie so much. It's just really fun. It brings me to that space. And I love Linguini. He's hilarious. I also love Remy. He's amazing. And his chef skills are absolutely amazing and though it's kind of odd that would probably never happen in real life it's still a fun movie i love watching it a lot and it's great all right wally this is another one that i haven't watched in a while um and i don't really remember enjoying too much but i'm gonna put it in, in it's enjoyable because i i think i remember enjoying it more than bug uh, than a bug's life um i remember it being pretty good i think i really like the whole idea of it being super far into the future and how humans are. I think that whole theme was really great. But I think the ending just kind of like, it, it just felt like a very generic ending. You know, the whole first and second acts were great. And they set up this awesome thing. And then the third act kind of fell a bit short. It felt like a regular, you know, kind of, not Pixar film, but just felt like a generic uh, ending to a film. Um, not much else to say about it. All right, uh, this is another one that I think is similar to Wally. I think the first two acts were great and the third act kind of kind of just felt generic and you know super unrealistic, but I'm gonna put it in it, it's enjoyable above uh, Wally. I still think it's a really great movie. Um, I love Carl and uh, what's the little kid's name? I, yeah, the Boy Scout, I, I forget his name, honestly. I've forgotten all these names, but I love their relationship uh, as it grows throughout the film. And that, man, another intro that it was so sad, um, but it really set up a great movie. And it, man, I cannot get over that intro, it was so sad. And also I love Doug, great dog. I love uh, that whole idea of them talking in this. Um, and the twist villain at the end was pretty cool too. So yeah, not something you, you'd expect since that was uh, the person that Carl looked up to when he was younger. So that was really awesome. I enjoy this movie a lot. I don't rewatch it too much, but I still really like it. I think it's great. All right, Toy Story 3. This is like a huge jump because Toy Story 2 was from 1999 and then Toy Story 3 came out in 2010. So that was crazy. Toy Story 3, I will put 
I'll put in very good uh, above Monster Sing and everything else. I think this is a really great movie. This probably should have been the conclusion to the franchise. I know we're hearing things about Toy Story 5 now and they've confirmed it and I'm just... I, I'm kind of done with this franchise as much as I love it. I think it should have ended here because it is absolutely a great ending. I love how Andy moves on at the end and he gives his toys to the next generation of kids, which is, uh, of course, Bonnie's generation. And it's, just, it's really sad and super heartfelt. You know, you really feel, especially, you know, the beginning and ending with Andy and how he's going to college now. You really see how much time has grown. And this is, I mean, this is how most, people li most people's lives are, you know. Um, but it's really awesome to see how much he's truly connected with these toys. And it's awesome to see these toys connecting with each other and how it's really culminating to this final movie. So overall, it was really great. I really enjoyed it. Should have been the ending, and man, yeah, it really should have been the ending. Okay, Cars 2, not one of my favorites. This is gonna go in big yikes. Um, or actually, yeah, it'll go in big yikes. This is probably, okay, it's not the worst Pixar film, there's worse, but this is one of the worst. It just took everything from Cars 1 and it completely changed everything. We're now into spies and we got Mater as the main character and he's a spy too and I don't know what happened to racing in this movie it was just it was so weird but Finn McMissile he's awesome his theme is is really great I that that's all I have to say about that okay Brave another one that I've not watched in a while but I remember enjoying it a decent amount I'll put it at the bottom it's enjoyable I think you know it's a fine movie decent enough uh, premise and idea for it, but I just don't think it lives up to some of the other Pixar films on here um, Yeah, I, I guess you know, I, I guess I really liked how uh, Merida I think that's her name and her mom uh, They kind of went from not being great together at the end where Merida is like really like caring for her mom She's really sad. So I like that um, But honestly, I don't remember too much else. I think I just remember it being kind of generic and not really living up to some of the other Pixar films. Okay, and Monsters University. This is another one I think is super underrated, especially now since I am in high school and I'm gonna be a junior next year. So I'm getting up to college. I've been, uh, you know, doing college visits and all that stuff. So this one definitely is more relatable now. And after rewatches and stuff, this is going in best of the best. I will put it above Toy Story 2. Do I put it above Ratatouille? All right, yeah, I'm putting it above Ratatouille, and I know this is probably a super hot take, especially since it's above the original Monster Sync, but I just enjoy this movie a lot. I think uh, we really see Mike and Sully's relationship because uh, grow a lot, because the first movie, you know, you just see their relationship, they're really good friends. But I love how in this one, they start off as like practically enemies, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's great to see uh, this origin story for them. And, you know, I liked how it wasn't really the happiest ending of all time. They didn't, like, go on and, like, graduate from their university as, like, top uh, scare uh, monsters or whatever. So I think that was great how they actually got expelled at the end. How uh, they didn't win that tournament, so they cheated with that one. Yeah, so that was great. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. I think it's one of those rewatchable Pixar movies. Super relatable now. I love the characters. I love the relationship growth. I love basically everything about it. It's a really great movie. All right, Inside Out. This is one of the recent Pixar movies that I think was super great. I really enjoyed Inside Out. Um, I'm gonna put it in very good. I'm gonna put it, I'll put it in very good below Toy Story 3. I really enjoy Inside Out. I really like that whole idea of the emotions uh, inside everyone's head and stuff like that. I think it's just really a fun movie and I love how, you know, we can see how sometimes you don't always need to be happy. You can express sadness, you can express anger, you know, all this stuff. And I especially showed it at the end where you kind of combine that happiness, but also sadness. I really love that. That was beautiful, absolutely amazing. Such a rewatchable film, I love it. Um, the sequel, I know they announced it. I'm a bit on the fence with it. I think this is such a great film that I don't know if it really needs a sequel, even though, you know, we had that whole puberty button uh, show up at the end there. But I, th I thought, I always thought that was kind of a joke rather than setting up a sequel, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it's good because 
recent Pixar films have been kind of iffy, if I'm gonna be honest. Alright, The Good Dinosaur. This is uh, not one of my favorite Pixar films. I'm putting it at the bottom of Big Yikes before, um, or sorry, behind Cars 2 even. I just don't really enjoy this movie. I think the, uh, the, char the animation for the characters was just so bad in comparison to the backgrounds because the backgrounds were amazing for animation. They looked real. And then you just throw in these like really like cartoony dinosaurs and cavemen. It's just kind of off-putting, I guess. I think the story is really generic and pretty boring. I haven't watched this one in a while, but I just was not a big fan of this movie and I probably won't be watching it anytime soon. Finding Dory. This one was, in my opinion, the most unnecessary sequel of Pixar. I'm gonna put it in small yikes. Uh, above uh, Bugs Life though, I, I did not enjoy this movie too much. I think for the first time, I thought it was, oh, I was like, okay, it's all right. I was obviously younger then, but uh, I rewatched it kind of recently. Was not a big fan of it, honestly, because I, I just feel like, I mean, Finding Nemo is such a great movie, but there's no reason for them to make a sequel. There was no reason for, like, Dory to have this whole adventure, and it wasn't even really about finding, like, like looking for Dory, like how it was looking for Nemo, which I guess was kind of cool. The Finding Dory uh, title was more like Dory's finding herself, which was nice, a uh, nice change of things. But otherwise, I think it's forgettable. I love Hank the Lobster. Hank the Lobster is amazing. Or, or Lobster, I don't know what I'm saying. Hank the Octopus, my bad. Okay, Cars 3. Uh, this one. All right, I'm, I'm gonna put this one in. It's enjoyable above Brave and above, yeah, I'll do above Wally as well. Cars 3 felt kind of weird to me because I thought it was a pretty enjoyable film actually but because Cars 2 was so focused on spying and uh, not really about racing it felt so weird for Cars 3 for McQueen to already be like an older racer now because in the first one he was really young and we know in the second one he was kind of in the middle of his career there but because we didn't see enough racing it just felt kind of weird for him to jump to this uh, older version of himself in Cars 3. Overall I thought it was a pretty decent enough film kind of generic again but at least we focused on racing again I like I really like the soundtrack to this film. I think we had some good songs but I also did not like Cruz Ramirez um, being the one to win the race at the end um, I I kind of felt that that her whole thing of being of wanting to be a racer was kind of pointless and I think McQueen should have just done the race and either won or lost I mean you know Losing probably would have been more realistic, but winning would have been a great ending to the uh, trilogy. But losing could have been a cool ending as well. Uh, I just think McQueen should complete the full race, especially since this is probably the last Cars movie. Um, but yeah, overall, it's it's fine. I'll watch it every now and often. Um, yeah, let's move on. Coco, this is one of the recent uh, Pixar films that I really, really liked. I'm going to put it in Best of the Best. I'll put it... Do I put it above Toy Story 2? Yeah. Yeah, I'll put it I'll put it above Toy Story 2, but below all the other ones. I really enjoyed Coco. Just a super awesome story. It was really just I don't know why. I, I really enjoy it. I think it's rewatchable. I think it's fun. I love the music. I, I love the villain actually. I think Ernesto de la Cruz was a really great villain. I, I liked how he was more not like a superpower type of villain or anything like that he was more of just a guy who stole music from uh hector so i really enjoy this movie i think it's just amazing in pretty much every single way and that's why it's going the best of the best all right now we made it to incredibles 2 we're getting into uh, a lot of sequels here as you can see but uh yeah incredibles 2 i think is i i actually would still put in best of the best i really do enjoy this movie but there are some flaws to it. Um, I'll put it. I'll put it just above Toy Story 2. The thing about Incredibles 2 is that I did not like how we still had the same plot with superheroes being illegal. Like, yes, they handled it really well in the movie, and I think if this was the first movie, that would be great. I think that then this would move up even higher. It's more just nitpicky stuff about this movie. Otherwise, I think it's a really good movie. But 
The thing with The Incredibles is that it ended with the superheroes saving the day and really like saving the world. So you'd think that superheroes would be made uh, legal again. And so it's just kind of weird for them to still be illegal. And it was also really odd since at the end of the first Incredibles, um, they were already suited up to fight the Underminer. And then in the second one, after they fight the Underminer, um, Elastigirl is like, you know, talking about how they shouldn't have done this and all this stuff. And it's like, it's just kind of weird when she seemed on board with it at the end of The Incredibles. So kind of odd. They kind of went against things there. And I also was not a big fan of Screen Slaver. I think she kind of was just a boring and generic villain. Syndrome was much better. But otherwise, really fun movie. I rewatch it a lot, especially on airplane rides for whatever reason. So it's a great movie. All right, Toy Story 4. Uh, probably uh, another really unnecessary sequel. I'll put it. I'll put it in. It's enjoyable. Um, below up. You know, it's it's enjoyable. It's fine. It's not necessary. I guess Bo Peep coming back was kind of cool and a good way. And I I guess the ending with Woody leaving um, his gang was was kind of cool and unexpected in my opinion. But. I don't know, it just, it wasn't my favorite. I think Toy Story 3 was a much better ending, especially since, you know, Andy trusted Bonnie with his toys, and Woody is his, you know, probably his favorite. That's the one I think his dad gave him before his dad passed away. So it just felt really sad and like, kind of, a, I don't know, kind of annoyed me that Bonnie just didn't care for it and then lost it and didn't even realize it. Oh, uh, yeah, just, Things like that, really nitpicky stuff, but otherwise it was fine, it was enjoyable. All right, onward, um, this one, I remember, this was the COVID movie I watched during COVID, but let's see, um, uh, I actually, I enjoyed Onward, so I'll put it, in, I'll put it in It's Enjoyable, below up, but above Toy Story 4. You know, it's a, it's a pretty good movie. I think Tom Holland was really great. Chris Pratt was really great. They have some great chemistry together, which was super nice. And I, I overall really like the adventure that they go on. And I, again, this was another sad ending where um, Ian, I think that his name was Ian. The, yeah, he actually did not get to see his dad even when his dad uh, came back. But uh, the older brother, I forget his name, did get to see him, which was really nice. And it was also super great to see uh, how... Uh, Ian, is his name Ian? I don't think his name is Ian. How the younger, uh, how Tom Holland's character finally realized that his older brother was kind of like his dad to him all along. That was just super awesome because the whole movie, he kind of hated him. And it was just really awesome to see their relationship grow. And I think that was the whole premise of the movie, which was really awesome. Um, def not super rewatchable, I'll, I'll watch it again every so often. I think it was pretty good. Um, yeah. All right, Soul. This one is one that I did not enjoy too much. And maybe that's because I'm still a kid and I don't really understand it too well, but I'm gonna put it in Small Yikes. I'll put it at the very top. I honestly just felt that this movie was super boring. When I heard about this one, I was pretty excited. I was expecting something like Inside Out, kind of similar. And it just kind of, just kind of odd and not really where I would have wanted it to be. And pretty much everything in that soul world or whatever was super bad and boring. At least the real life stuff was, was decent enough, but still, I think overall it's just a boring movie, especially uh, getting to the second and third acts. All right. Oh, and also, I think he should have died at the end of the movie because I think that would have just been much a better ending rather than him getting a second chance. All right, let's go into Luca. Now, this movie is going to be one that I have not watched, actually. So, I heard pretty good things about it. I just never got around to watching this movie. And I think that's because I don't... It, I don't think it released in theaters, from what I remember. Um, but it, it might have. I just never watched this movie for whatever reason. And I don't know, maybe it's because I was not a big fan of some of the newer Pixar films. But I'll probably watch it at some point because I've heard some good things about it but I've also heard that it's kind of just generic not super uh, memorable but yeah we'll see I think yeah I just haven't watched it yet all right turning red turning red is one that I watched in school that's the only way I found out about it and this is one that I did not like either I'm gonna put it in small yikes or oh yeah sorry okay I'll put it 
at the very top of Swamp I, I just, I don't know why, I did not enjoy this movie too much. Uh, I felt kind of bored throughout the whole thing. I think the whole idea of it was just kind of weird and random. Um, yeah, I guess I liked how the mom kind of chilled out. Not chilled, but yeah, like the mom and the daughters kind of grow throughout the film. How the mom kind of understood things a little bit more about her at the end. That was fine, I guess. Um, otherwise, I don't think so. this will be a very memorable Pixar film. Okay, Lightyear. Lightyear is one that I did watch on Disney+. Plus, um, and this is one that I think was kind of unnecessary and not not super great. Um, uh, I'll put it in It's Enjoyable, though. Below uh, Wally e and... Uh, uh, and above Brave. Um, it's fine. It's uh, it's based off like it's supposed to be the movie that Andy watched that got him into Buzz Lightyear, which kind of felt off to me because uh, it was kind of like because the designs in this movie were uh, very different from how they are as a, as a toy. So that was also kind of odd. But yeah, it was a fine movie. I liked how Buzz was so focused on uh, doing the space thing that he pretty he went through time so fast that he lost his friends and I mean he didn't even like get to see his friends like get married and have kids and all this stuff and he comes back and yeah, everyone's gone and so that was pretty cool I liked that whole idea otherwise it just felt kind of generic and didn't really feel like a part of the Toy Story franchise and I think on its own it's fine uh, it might have gone a bit higher if uh, it was on its own but because it's connected to the Toy Story franchise, it just felt kind of off from the whole thing. Alright, the last one, the one that comes out this Friday, is Elemental, and I think, oh, that's weird, okay, there we go, I think this one is actually pretty good, I'm gonna put it, and it's enjoyable, I'll put it above, I'll put it above, like, every, or below, yeah, below onward, actually, sorry, okay, there we go, yeah, so I think this one's pretty enjoyable. I know from the trailers, at least I thought it seemed kind of generic and not really uh, out there as part of Pixar films, and that's kind of how it ended up in my opinion. It was fine. It had a pretty good message. It was kind of cool to see all the elements because the animation is pretty nice, but I think just compared to like, you know, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which just came out, it's just, it's just kind of different. I know they're two different companies, but you know, they're both PG movies and I think from Pixar we need to get something a little bit more and better. So there you go, that is my Pixar tier list, you can take a picture if you want. Uh, uh, in the comments, uh, sorry, in the comments down below, leave your rankings for the Pixar films um, or maybe like your top 5, top 10 or something. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, the Flash comes out this Friday too, so we'll be probably making a review about that, we'll see it and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one.